Why are so many dogs suffering from health issues? Actress Katherine Heigl, who's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation, says she's seen more issues with dogs' joints, odors, and health than ever before. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to improve any dog's health. Their food. What she discovered is that the way many dog foods are made can actually create toxins that could be wrecking our dog's health. And this is true even for many premium brands. Fortunately, she found that by adding just a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. She's made a 20-minute video explaining step-by-step step how anyone can do this same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. If you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash mc911 and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S-F-O-O-D dot com slash MC911. Hey, y'all. Just wanted to give you a quick update for those of you that listened to the last episode. Most likely you've seen the news about it, but just in case you didn't, I wanted to make sure everyone knew. I generally schedule my episodes to be released at midnight on the release days, and approximately seven and a half hours after I released the last episode, we got the news. Riley has been found, but it wasn't at all the outcome that anyone wanted. 911, what's the exact location of your emergency? Yes, ma'am, I'm at 1740 uh, 61st Avenue North, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, okay, I, absolutely, 40, I just... 60, 61st Avenue North in the nation's office of Daniel? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what happened? Uh, uh, my company works on the river. I have just found a uh, dead body. I believe it to be Riley. Okay. And you said you guys found a dead body? Yes, ma'am, in the river. We unload barges at this facility, what does it look and I was like? checking around my dock. Uh, it's definitely got a person hair, black shirt, kind of like a white, muddy looking on the front. It's face it's down in the water. Shirt. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's a, Caucasian. It, it looks like a male. Yes, ma'am. Okay, is he right on the, like, the, um, what is it called? Yeah, he's on the front of my uh, work barge. Uh, I'm at River Marker 184 on the Cumberland River. You said River Marker 184? Yes, ma'am. Okay, one second. And my company has requested only uh, police and rescue personnel only on site. <laughs> All right, so I already have this call up. Um, I have it at 1740, 61, 60, I'm sorry, 61st Avenue North in the nation's office Centennial. What is the name of this? Is there a name on the building or? Yeah, it's a, there's a sign out front. It's uh, Holston. You said Holston, H-O-L-S-T-O-N? H-O-L-C-I-M. Okay. Is he completely submerged, or is he right on that, like, the the bed? Not the bed, but, like, is he partially in the water, partially out of the water? No. He's he's fully submerged besides his, his uh, back sticking out of the water. I actually had to move a log off of, his, off of the head to confirm it was a body. Okay. I have this call up, and I'm going to get somebody out there, okay? No, all right. I'll, uh, I'll meet them up top. I'm going to make my way up from the river here in just a few minutes. Okay. All right. I'll let you go. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. I was at work when we got the call about that. I was working on a police radio for a different area of town, but the word got around pretty quickly. 
obviously I couldn't say anything initially because we didn't have 100% confirmation and the family hadn't been notified yet. About two hours after he was found, the information was released in the news media. It's incredibly unfortunate news that I really wish was different. If you live near a larger body of water, like the Cumberland River, like we have here in Nashville, chances are that this is a type of call that 911 dispatch centers will get with some level of frequency. It's not really a once in a lifetime or once a year type thing. We will get calls about found bodies in the river or lake every once in a while. The reasons that they're there can range from some sort of homicide to a suicide and even likely like this, something that may be an accident. Most times for us, a fisherman or an employee on a river barge will spot the body and phone us about it. And just like this caller said, when they're found, they're found face down. When the gases expand enough to have them float back to the top, the expansion of those gases happen in the chest and abdomen areas. Your arms and legs don't have the same thing happen, so they're essentially weighing the rest of the body down, and it makes you float face down. I said in the last episode that with the water temperature being between 54 and 56 degrees, that if he was in the river, he would likely float somewhere in the range of 10 to 14 days. And with this thinner build, it could be towards the end of that range. He was found a little over 13 days from when he went missing, so it was right in the middle of that. There has been a preliminary autopsy over the weekend, and one of the detectives for the case attended it. Nashville Chief of Police John Drake later held a press conference and said there were no immediate signs of foul play, that it's likely an accident, and there is no other evidence that suggests anything other than that. He was found with several identifying pieces still on him. The shirt that everyone has seen in all the videos, his watch was also still found on his person. The full autopsy and toxicology is expected in the next month investigation will remain open until that's complete. Before I finish up the episode, the family held a brief press conference. I have the audio from that. It starts out with the public information officer from Metro Nashville Police, then goes to Riley's father, his stepfather, and finally his mother. I want to start by uh, expressing our police department's very deep sorrow over the finding of Riley today and we are with his parents. I think they know that and we'll continue to be with them in the days and weeks ahead in our thoughts and prayers. I want to start this afternoon by introducing Riley's father, Ryan Gilbert. Uh, thank you all for being here and those of you that help us keep Riley's face in front of the cameras. Um, you've helped us get some closure here and let us take our boy home. Um, I got a lot of people to thank, and I'm sure I'll forget somebody. Uh, you won't be forgotten. I'll, I'll remember you. The whole family will remember you. But uh, uh, I want to first thank the uh, NMPD for their efforts. They've had a lot of sleepless nights on this case as well. Uh, can't give them enough thanks. Uh, really appreciate the work they've done. Uh, the United Cajun Navy has come in to assist them. Uh, they've they've done a lot of a lot of work on the water and land for us. Uh, came in and gave structure to this investigation on our side of it, and helped keep things lined out. Uh, Dave Flag here with the United Cajun Navy. They've been a great asset great asset to us. Um, the individuals in the area that have come in contact with us that have helped us uh, with numerous things, gathering supplies and uh, taking care of stuff like that, putting up flyers and whatnot. The Ward family, for all their work, uh, they put up a ton of flyers around town. They've been making phone calls. They've been assisting us in any way they can. Um, all the people that have donated items to them that they've got to us throughout this whole ordeal. All the people back home in our own personal lives that have been there to support us. 
and our family at home as well. Uh, thank you for keeping us in your thoughts and prayers. We can't say enough to all of you. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to mention uh, also uh, Gary and or Skip, Skip. Skip. Skip Butler uh, come in with the airboats. Uh, we've been on the water for a few days with those guys. They've been uh, they've been great to work with us. We can't appreciate we can't thank them any more. It's just unbelievable what they've done for us. Most of you are familiar with seeing my face by now. I'm sure we're all ready for it to be over with. It's been an emotional roller coaster. We're quite thankful for everything that you've done for our family. The grace that you've given us, it means a lot, more than you'll ever know. We have learned through this ordeal that everybody has brought all the good to us. We've had a little bad. You're going to have that. But it has given us faith in people that sometimes gets clouded by what we're constantly hearing. We're extremely thankful for all the volunteers that have shown up, given us their time, their effort, their energy, very little sleep they've gone on. Our family, we can't thank our family enough for all the support that they've provided us, for all the you know time spent, the love, the energy. Our friends that we consider family that aren't able to be here but have been at home caring to everything that we can't take care of, thank you. To the people of Nashville, I can't thank you enough for the support, the love, the encouragement that you've shown myself and my wife and Ryan and Millie. You don't understand how much that meant to us in some of our darkest hours. The hugs, the prayers, the offers. I can't say it enough. Thank you. To the Nashville Police Department. We know this hasn't been easy. We've tried to handle it with as much grace and poise as we can. It's hard. It's never quick enough when it's your, your family member. Like I told everybody numerous times, if he was two blocks away from us and they were walking him to us, it wasn't quick enough. We want him two inches in front of us. So thank you for everything that you've done for us. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you. I just want to reiterate um, how thankful we are for everyone and how much we appreciate everyone's support and love and prayers because we feel them. We have felt every one of them, every single one. I just ask that you mamas out there hug your babies tight tonight, please. Please for me, just hug your babies tight tonight. And again, thank you. Thank you for sharing our story. That's going to do it for this one. Before I go, I wanted to mention just briefly that while Riley has been found, before he went missing, there was another missing person in a town just north of Nashville, a town called Hendersonville. His name is Sebastian Rogers. He's 15 years old and has autism. His mother went to wake him up for school one morning and found his room empty. He is believed to have left the house with just the clothes he had on, no shoes, and may have had a flashlight with him. He's been missing since February 26, and despite efforts from police using search dogs, drones, helicopters, and a ton of personnel on foot, he still hasn't been found. I highly urge everyone to do a Google search for Sebastian Rogers and familiarize yourself with his case as well as his photo, so if you see anyone looking like him, you can phone the police. 
I'm sure the family will appreciate any extra sets of eyes looking for him, and I'm hoping he is found sooner than later. Back to Riley. I think I echo pretty much everyone when I say this isn't the way we wanted this to turn out. It's incredibly sad. What his mother said, she's absolutely right. Hug your babies tight tonight. For Music City 911, I'm Brandon, and y'all have a good one. Say goodbye to your credit card rewards. Greedy corporate mega stores, led by Walmart and Target are pushing for a law in Congress to take away your hard-earned cash back and travel points to line their pockets. The Durbin Marshall credit card bill would enact harmful credit card routing mandates that would end credit card rewards as we know it. If you love your credit card rewards, tell your lawmakers, hands off my rewards. Tell them to oppose the Durbin Marshall credit card bill.